Well, and let's talk about Twitter. Oh, yeah. Shall we? Shall we shall, because today, oh, fucking men. <laughs> <clears throat> what was your day on Twitter like? Well, today a man I don't know uh, <laughs> tweeted at me, it just took my female friend oh. Eight pages to realize Roxanne Gay's book is garbage. As you can see, I memorized the negative criticism. <laughs> I read that shit once, and it's seared on my brain. And I was just like hurt. <laughs> and so that was that took up a lot of my day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually saw that because I. So listen, Twitter's so toxic. First of all, I'm not even on Twitter right now. I've yeah, he deleted Twitter it from my phone. Um, I, I glance at it at work. You know, it's like it's wild out there. Um, and so Roxanne, actually, we text each yeah. other instead of tweeting each other. Um, but and something I said to you the other day is like, I'm starting to wonder if Twitter is worth all the poison we, and particularly women, people of color, uh, trans people, have to swallow. Is it worth the medicine we're making out of it? I agree. That's a big question for me because I've long said I will not leave Twitter because I do enjoy it and because mm -hmm. when I'm in Indiana, it's so nice to feel connected to a larger community of people who I find interesting. And many people are so funny and so smart on Twitter. But then things like this happen. I mean, this guy, was it was nothing. He was just getting on my nerves. But he tagged me. He could have said that without tagging me because I actually don't um, keep a search on my name on Twitter because it's too mean. And I um, am sensitive. <laughs> and so You're human. I am human, really. Yeah. And so I actually do not go looking. The only thing, I do have a Google alert, but I don't search like within social media for myself because A, that's a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just don't need it. And so he wanted me to see this. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know how much longer I want to be part of a space where people do that. Like, have your opinion, hate my book, I get it. I'm laughing all the way to the bank, so <laughs> it's fine. It's just, it's, it is toxic and it is unhealthy and, and in, I think that so many people have become emboldened by November 8th and just the travesty of what happened and so now it, anything goes. But what's interesting is that it's not happening in real life per se. Mm. Because I, I live in Indiana in a small town with a, a significant clan presence, and things are fine there. Things are, people are acting normal, but there is something about the online space where people just let go of every terrible thought they've ever had, mm -hmm. and then Twitter rewards them mm. by not taking them out of that space and saying, this is the freedom of speech. No, that's not what freedom of speech is. They can say that, but you can also take their account away. That's the freedom of owning Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm on the fence now. Yeah. Was there, setting, a, yes, setting aside the election, <laughs> as if we could do that, um, was there a moment before the election where you, you felt the turn? Because I, I've been on Twitter since 2008, mm -hmm. and I think you were on it. Uh, just a year before, 2007. Okay, okay. Ooh, I can't even imagine what that was like. Ye olden days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, and in many ways I still feel like I have 200 followers and a right. locked account, mm -hmm. and it's hard to... Oh, right, you were locked when I you was became, locked okay. until and I, I had like, about 2,000 followers, and then I was like, yeah. well, that ship sailed, so yeah. it's time to unlock the account. Yeah. Um, so was there a moment where, where you first were like, oh, this is... Not just in terms of obviously the, your platform and as you're publishing work and you were editing and really, you know, really building a community of writers and I'm very grateful to be a part of that, but was there a moment where you started to feel the toxicity that we now almost take for granted? I think 2015, and mm -hmm. I don't, I can't pin it to a specific moment, but the sort of, it's not even conservative, it's the virulent, like alt-right, white supremacist, men and women, there are some women involved, just started to do this swarming thing mm. and regularly. Mm -hmm. And it was just, just relentless mm -hmm. and it hasn't gone away. They just, mm -hmm. they gang up on Reddit or some other forum and decide this is the person we're going to attack today. And what's horrifying is that they feel righteous about this. They feel like they're doing something. And I'm like, you're in a basement covered in Cheetos, like, 
you're not doing anything. And when I turn the computer off, life will go on. But what's changed is that people have started to take this off of Twitter. Mm. Like people call my job and wow. I teach at a state university in a conservative state. And so I, I have tenure now, so it's fine. But um, <laughs> 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 it feels so good sometimes. Yeah. It's just like, it. hate all you want, you cannot get me fired. <laughs> but it's embarrassing when my department chair is like, I just spend an hour on the phone with a man named Fred who's mad that you blocked him on Twitter because he would like access to you. This is a true story. Um, and so that they're taking it that far and that they're also publishing the addresses of women mm -hmm. who they don't like, and me and, or men, or queer people, um, who they're opposed to, that's when it becomes dangerous because one of these wing nuts is someday going to have a gun. And whew, that's not gonna be a good day. And so as much as we'd like to say it's just the internet, right. it's actually becoming more than the internet in some very terrifying ways. And I think we have to look at that. Right. And I think Twitter needs to face reality and face that these things are moving beyond their platform.